Hiya, uh, Steve from Bambus again. Uh, okay, one of the machines we supply a lot of uh, and service a lot is the Brother PR series, six needle and ten needle. And I, we continually get rang up uh, by uh, operators who are having little niggling faults. And in speaking to them on the phone, uh, discover that they're not doing the sort of most basic operator maintenance uh, that they should be doing. Uh, this is just a, a little video on just a few little maintenance things that if you've got a, a, a six or ten needle rubber PR, you should be doing. Uh, so let's get straight into it. So here's a six needle version. Now it doesn't matter whether you've got a horizontal screen or a vertical screen, everything I'm going to show you uh, is the same on all six and ten needle machines. Uh, now, first of all, one of the things that people don't seem to realise is the, the maintenance schedule on these machines is every 500 hours. People ring up and they say, well I'll do a normal machine, it's done 500 hours. So, on the home screen, at the bottom somewhere, there'll be a picture of that page with the corner turned over. And if you simply press that, it goes through to six pages. You can scroll forwards or backwards. If you go back, it goes on to this one. And the total count, the total time on this machine is 1,542 hours. Sorry, that's the trip time. The total time is 1,588. So when we service the machine, we zero the trip time. So if you've got a brand new machine, both of those will start counting from zero up. When the trip time gets to 500 or thereabouts, you need to get it serviced. When we service it, we zero that. So every time it gets to 500 again, it needs servicing. Uh, okay, now, operator maintenance that you're going to do yourself about once a month you need to take the needle plate off and clean out underneath it so get your s-shaped screwdriver out of your show that again Steve, accessories so you can see it there we go yeah yeah thank you and there's two screws back of the needle plate. This one's tight. This one and this one that you need to undo. There we go. And once you've done it the first couple of turns with a screwdriver, you can just undo it. Take the needle plate off. Okay, now with the machine switched on as this one is, you can't move the movable knife. You need to switch the machine off, pull the movable knife towards you, and there's usually loads of threads caught in this area. Clean it all out, brush it out, get the hoover off your attachment, suck it out, then push that back uh, and put the needle plate back on. Do that about once a month. Uh, now the other thing, maybe every two or three months, is you need to change the needles on your machine. Now to change the needles, let me switch it back on so it's got a little bit more light, is you got this tool, uh, an Allen screwdriver in your tool kit. So pop it in the needle clamp screw. Loosen it off. You only need to loosen it off about one, one and a half turns, and the needle will just come out. If you can't get it out, there you go, it's fallen out. To put it back in, obviously get a brand new one, uh, flat sided, embroidery special organ needle, specially made for the machine. We supply them, they're widely available. Don't put crap needles in it. Flat side to the back. Push it up. Now I like to use a pair of thin nose pliers. 
you need to put it up into the needle clamp because you've got to push it all the way up until it stops and then tighten it up okay very quick very simple do that with all six uh, now one of the other errors that we get quite a lot is after you've been using your machine for uh, quite a while you might start to get wiper error now the wiper error is as a result of the threads not cutting cleanly usually that is fixed in the first instance when it first starts to happen by cleaning the excess threads out from underneath the needle plate if you've tried that and that doesn't fix it and you still get uh, thread cut errors and wiper error then you need to change the fixed knife on your machine which is something you can do yourself as an operator again you're using the same screwdriver this is the movable knife this one here which moves pull that out of the way and this one here is the fixed knife so pop that on it loosen the screw off yeah Take that off. That's, we were gonna go and get a new one and put it on it, but let's just put the yes, same one back show on. show that to everyone so you can see the okay. shape and the look of it. Yeah. It. Now, I'm gonna switch this back on so we've got a bit more light. Now, there's a stud here, a little pin. Yeah, so what we need to do is just put fixed knife on there put the screw back in now of course you've got this movement on it now you need to hold it against that pin as you tighten it up because you're going to turn the screw clockwise obviously to tighten it which is naturally going to want to turn the blade away from the pin keep it pressed hard against the pin and at the same time tighten it up okay pop that back and that will fix your cutting errors and your wiper errors. It's uh, a consumable item. After so many cuts, it wears, and you need to swap it. Uh, they cost about 13 quid. Ring us up, we'll send you one out. Uh, now, then of course, you need to put your needle plate back on. Now, just before you put your needle plate back on, one of the other errors we get a lot of is people not fitting the bobbin case correctly. Now this is a simple thing and uh, you can fit it in a couple of ways. Some people hold the latch open and they push it in like that. That's fine. Some people go like that and then push it without holding the latch open and it clicks into place. What happens is in either instance some people don't push it all the way to the back, so they leave it like that. The machine starts sewing, loads of thread jam and get caught behind the bobbin case. You have to take the bobbin case out, clear all the threads that are all caught in there, and then put this back in. So either, if you're using the hold the latch method, make sure you've pushed it all the way to the back, or if you're using the push it in method push it until it clicks okay now we can put the needle plate back on now if you've got a later machine it'll have one of these now this will only go on one way you can't get it to fit that way it'll only fit this way and it goes just like that 
needle plate locates, you'll feel it locate, and then of course just put the needle plate screws back in. course with your screwdriver tightening them up don't go mad tightening them up because you get a lot of mechanical advantage with this screwdriver turn it till they stop and then just nip them okay uh, now one of the other uh, big uh, things that you need to do operator maintenance wise is keep this tension platform free of dust. Now of course because it's flat loads of dust collects on it. When you're not using your machine try and keep it covered up. Uh, under each one of these is a sensor and if it gets full of dust it affects it. Now everyone will like wince at this but I'm just going to show you guys a couple of threading things because again even if you've had the machine for ages one of the continual operator errors it's simply threading. You're in a rush, you've re-threaded it, and you've just not threaded it right. And uh, it, it's, it happens time and time again. I just want to show you a couple of things. Let's just thread this one up through here. Through here. Through there. Now, the first error is this pre-tensioner here. And because you tend to stand in front of the machine, <clears throat> a lot of people just go like this so it looks like it's threaded but if you go around this side and look from the side you can see it's come out from underneath the spring and it's not underneath the tail at the back now it needs to be underneath the tail at the back as well as the front you need to go like that That's how it should be. Okay, don't come back around this side. Huh? So, the reason for that pre tensioner is it grips the thread and puts some tension on it, and it needs to have some tension on it so that when you wrap the thread around the tension disc, twice remember. So, just look at this. If I lift that up, can you see that as the thread? feeds through the tension disc rotates. Move up a little bit Stephen. Do that again. There you go, now you can see it. Yeah, it rotates. Now if your machine stops showing and you get an error message on the screen saying check upper and lower thread and the thread's okay. You think well I've not run out of thread, there's no thread breakage or anything. It's usually the fact that the you've not threaded it under the pretensioner properly and that it's not gripping the thread tight enough so that the thread can in turn grip this tension disc tight enough to make it rotate. It's a small thing but just be aware of it and of course you've got another pre-tensioner even though it's after the tension disc here again make sure you've got it under the front and back of that properly okay that's the errors on that now uh, okay one of the final thing so uh, is the AD test now on the PR machines this red you might not have a red one some of them are red some aren't but the ones that are red a red to highlight the fact that you need to keep this thumb screw tight. Now underneath that thumb screw is the frame size sensor there okay and it's sensitive and what happens is when you put a frame on of course you need to loosen it off Loosen the two thumb screws off. Move this frame to the size you're going to put on. 
and then of course you tighten them both up again. Some people don't tighten that one enough. You need to tighten it up good. You don't need to go crazy with a screwdriver. You can tighten it with your fingers, but tighten it well. So you're doing a run and you're doing 100 items and you're not changing the frame size. So you've got no need to lean over and adjust these. But the vibration of the machine running over a couple of hundred items and the fact that you keep banging the frame in and out, after a while, the red one, it just slackens off a little bit. And it's only got to slacken off a few degrees and the machine thinks you've put a different size frame on and it moves the design over to the left. You think, oh my God, what's happening? That's what it is. So the rule is, is that every time you set your frame off and put it back on, just lean over and check that the red thumb screw is still tight, okay? Now, that will avoid doing what I'm gonna do now, which is the final thing. I know it's going on a bit, but sometimes your machine will not center a design. And if you can't get it to center a design and you've checked that these thumb screws are tight, etc., then you can go into the service mode and carry out an AD test. And how you do that is this. So go into service mode on the machine, hold the three buttons down below the LCD screen, switch the machine on and hold them in while it switches on. Now depending on what model of PR you've got, you'll get a few different things here. On the earlier ones you won't get panel uh, board test mode too. Uh, you'll just get panel board test mode and main board test mode. Press the main board test mode and then press AD test. Okay, now on the earlier machines you won't get the lock on lock button. That just won't be there. This one it's got it so I'm going to press it to unlock it and then with master frame A on, which is the standard master frame, put the large frame on. So I get the largest frame. Here we go. Tighten them up. Wow. Well, Put that on and then I press the LL save button. Then it wants me to put the small frame on. So I set that one off. I get the very smallest frame, the 60mm by 40mm one. Adjust it to that. Make sure you tighten them both up well. Press the small save button. Now, if you've then got the lock on lock key, lock that again. If you've not got it, just click either OK or it may say close. Then press close again. Switch the machine off. Switch it back on and that will have reconfigured the frame size sensor so that whichever size frame you put on, it will automatically center the design. Uh, final thing, which is the very simplest thing, is where to oil it. You got some oil there? Take the bobbin case out, okay? Now where the machine naturally stops, it leaves a gap here at the bottom. There's the point of the shuttle. There, on that rim, you just put a drop of oil each day on that rim. That's it, uh, so that's my little operator 
uh, maintenance on the uh, PR. So take your needle plate off, clean out underneath it once a month. Every two or three months, change the needles. Keep the tension platform clean. Make sure you've threaded it upright. And each time you change the frame, check that red thumb screw is tight. Uh, it might just help you out. Anything beyond that, ring up, speak to Alan, myself, Shahid here. We can talk you through most things on the telephone. Uh, or if you've got a proper problem with your machine, then we'll fix it for you and we'll service it. We fix anyone's machine, you don't have to have bought it from us. Uh, we carry out a, a UK wide uh, collection and delivery service uh, where we fully service your machine for you. Give us a call. Okay, thanks guys.